Serving Southern New Mexico, this is the award-winning KRWG-TV News 22, where news matters. Good evening, everyone. I'm Cassandra Duenas. And I'm Jenny Hazlett. The Las Cruces police are investigating an unusual incident that happened at a local apartment complex. It happened sometime before 11 o'clock Friday morning. Three cars at the Flats apartment complex parking lot were damaged in what looked to be like an explosion. Viewers sent in photos that showed heavily damaged vehicles with considerable fire damage. Parts of the cars were melted, windows were blown out, and debris scattered everywhere. Kenny Carberg has been a resident at the Flats for t about two years up one morning and uh, the windows were all burnt out like a uh, glass on the floor and uh, both engines looked like they caught on fire or something. Flats management told us they are working with authorities to understand what caused the damage and ensure those affected have resources and support their tenants. And the Las Cruces Police Department needs your help to find the driver in a hit-and-run incident. On September 29th, Tony Perez was killed in a shooting and a motorcyclist was injured. Police believe Perez and at least three others were involved in a fight with the motorcyclist, who later pulled a gun on Perez and fired. As they fled the scene, the motorcyclist was hit by a dark-colored car. Anyone with information that can help identify the driver of the car or, is, or its location of the vehicle is asked to call the Las Cruces Police Department. Police are also investigating another motorcycle crash that happened early yesterday morning on South Main Street. A 24-year-old motorcyclist was killed in the accident, but police did not say if there were others involved in the crash. Part of the intersection between South Main Street and Wyatt Drive was closed during the investigation, but now these roads are open. And it's a little warm for a fall day today. Very pretty. What do you think about it, Noah? Well, Jenny and Cassandra, I do agree with you guys. It was a beautiful day today, even though we are a couple of degrees above average. Taking a little live look right outside Milton Hall here at New Mexico State University. A couple high level clouds passing through the area, not dropping in any rain today, but they did this morning on the north and east side of town. But let's go and take a look at those current conditions just right outside. You're currently seeing those mostly sunny skies. Temperature right around 82 degrees. Winds out of the west at around 5 miles per hour. Gusting at around 10, so you may want to take a jacket into the evening hours of tonight. Humidity at 13%, dew point at 29 degrees, and a barometer at 29.63. Taking a look at those conditions that we did see today, a high of 86 degrees, a couple of ticks above our average temperature of 81 degrees. Still a little bit toasty out there. Low this morning topped out around 54 degrees. We did receive no precipitation today, so that does keep our rain total at 4.92 inches at the below average level. Now we are seeing a little bit of a cooling trend midweek. When we'll see that, Jenny and Cassandra, I'll have that for you coming up. Thanks, Noah. Now this past Saturday, Las Cruces became the center of the LGBT plus community in southern New Mexico as Las Cruces held its first ever pride parade. Pride on the Plaza has been a yearly event, but this is the first year they've hosted a parade. Along with the parade, there were concerts, food trucks, and vendors set up to show support, an important tradition for the LGBTQ plus community. We find it important, you know, to be able to go to a place where we can feel free, safe, express ourselves, um, show people what, you know, who we love, what we care about. So it's always nice to have these kind of events. And Las Cruces is already planning next year's Pride Parade. Stay tuned, Noah. We'll be back with your national forecast. Make a million bucks. Start with a hundred. I am filming with Biz Kids on PBS. Biz Kids is coming back with all new episodes. What's up, guys? I'm Rachel Burke Smith, and I love Biz Kids. Like it. I'm turning this into a million dollars. Boom. I'm Monique Coleman, and I love BizKids. Check your local public TV listings at bizkids.com and join the BizKids to learn how to make and manage your own money. One million dollars. Saturday morning at 7.30 on KRWG Public Media. Step into the Dickie Chase kitchen and meet the younger generations who are carrying on the culinary traditions of legendary chef Leah Chase. See how it coats the spoon? That's exactly how you want it. Episodes will dish up Creole classics and explore the history of the iconic New Orleans restaurant. Get ready for a comfortable seat on the sofa because you're going to need it after this dish. A mouth-watering family story. The Dookie Chase Kitchen, Leah's Legacy. Sunday at 3.30 p.m. on KRWG Public Media. Welcome back. You're watching News 22 Tuesday, where news matters. 
Now, beer is one of the world's most widely consumed beverages, but as the world gets hotter, it may not taste the same. Beer is brewed simply with water, barley, yeast, and hops. The Global Chains Research Institute says hops in major beer-producing countries are ripening earlier and changing the taste. The heat could force brewers to work with different flavor profiles and make it more difficult to schedule harvesting and processing operations. Now, Cassandra, I noticed a little rain this morning. Yeah, a beautiful rainbow. No, what can you tell us? Well, guys, we did see that rain this morning, but it unfortunately did pass over us and moved out towards the east. You're looking at a radar map here on your screen. Most of that activity centered around South Texas, north, northeastern Mexico as well. And that's just some of the remnants from a hurricane that was in the Pacific coast earlier on today. Now that will continue into the Gulf of Mexico and potentially come, become some type of tropical system. But we'll get to that in a minute. If we want to zoom in here to the state of New Mexico, the southern part of the state, El Paso, Las Cruces, staying pretty much dry for the rest of today. This model does go about till 12. Uh, about 12 this morning, so not really expecting any rain shower. So it is the perfect time to actually maybe take your car for a wash and actually get it shined up just a little bit. Taking a look at our next map here, we're going to go ahead and take a look at what exactly the hurricane forecast or the tropical forecast is for that system that's moving through the northeast part of Mexico. As we do continue, this goes to, through Saturday. That does the path is pretty much the same. We can see New Orleans, some of the of the southeastern region of the United States experiencing some type of tropical rain activity, and that will just continue to be the case as we move through those days. Taking a look at this model here for the timing, this takes it through up around 6 p.m. on Wednesday. By the time we stop at 6 p.m. on Wednesday for your evening commute in New Orleans, that rain showers will pass through the area. By the time we get to your early morning hours on Thursday. Those showers and thunderstorms moving to the panhandle of Florida and making for a wet morning commute in that area over there. Taking a look at our next map of what we can expect or not what we can expect, but what we did see th this morning. These are some viewer images that were sent to us in the early morning hours. Beautiful rainbow out there and that will just uh, really got to enjoy the views out there. Now don't go anywhere because we'll be back with the New Mexico temperatures right after the break. Get plugged in to what's coming down the road. Whether you're ready for a new ride or need your drive expert advice, turn to Motor Week every week with me, John Davis. Saturday morning at 1130 on KRWG Public Media. If you look hard enough, go off the beaten track far enough, you'll find an America teeming with the unusual, the odd, the downright strange. I'm Will Klinger. And I'm your guide on a package tour we like to call Wild Travels. Wednesday at 2.30 on KRWG Public Media. KRWG TV's public file is available at 2915 McPhee Circle in Milton Hall, Room 117 on the campus of New Mexico State University. Regular business hours are from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. and 1 to 5 p.m. weekdays. You can also view the file online at publicfiles.fcc.gov. Well, welcome back to News 22 Tuesday. Taking a look at some of those temperatures around the state of New Mexico. Very fall-like in some areas, 69 over in Santa Fe, 78 in Albuquerque, 81 in Las Cruces, and a kind of warm out there in Deming at 86 degrees. What we can expect tomorrow is those warm-up and those temperatures just a little bit. You can see 88 here in Las Cruces returning to those warm temperatures. If we move up to the state, to the state capital of Santa Fe, 72 degrees is that temperature for tomorrow. And back in Deming, 87 degrees is that forecast high. Now, in the city of Alamogordo tonight, 55 degrees will be that low, with most clear skies 88 degrees tomorrow will be that high taking it to the city a truth of consequence is getting into those low 50s tonight may want to take a jacket if you're driving through passing through or staying in the area 88 degrees will be that high for tomorrow taking it to silver city 40s for you guys over there clear skies tonight 78 degrees partly cloudy skies for tomorrow and back here in las cruces we'll expect those cool conditions 54 as we reach the evening hours of tonight 88 degrees almost approaching those 90s by the time we get to your afternoon tomorrow now will we expect hot temperatures for the game tomorrow. I'll have that for you at the end of the show. Our White Sand National Park is getting some attention for some very old footprints. The prints were discovered two years ago and now we know how important they are. Scientists have determined they were made more than 21,000 years ago. They analyzed quartz crystals in the sediment and decided they were made 29,000 years ago. That's important because the most accepted theory is that humans came into North America via the Bering Land Bridge around 12,000 years ago. And Vic, we have another Aggie game this week. What can you tell us? Yes, we do, Jenny. Uh, coming up in sports, our Aggie football team is taking on the Sam Houston State Bearcats tomorrow. You can toss that remote because News 22 Sports is next.
the road again for another great season of Weekends with Yankee. As always, we'll serve up mouth-watering dishes from the region's best chefs. That is so good. See the work of some amazing artisans and take you on adventures you won't want to miss. Have this kind of view. It's something special. So join us, won't you, for Weekends with Yankee. It's the ultimate insider's guide to New England. Saturday at 8 p.m. on KRWG Public Media. We are traveling to beautiful destination, selecting three wines that define each area. And present them to local chefs who will be challenged to prepare amazing dishes for those wines. Join us on our journey to unique wineries around the world. Magnificent. Saturday at 7 p.m. on KRWG Public Media. This is KRWG-TV News 22 Sports. Welcome back. It's time to kick it with Vic. Well, NMSU football is preparing to take on the Sam Houston State Bearcats tomorrow at Aggie Memorial Stadium. The Aggies are coming off their first ever Wednesday game last week where they defeated Florida International University 34-17. That earned them their third win of the season. As they go into their second ever Wednesday game, the Aggies look to take last week's momentum into tomorrow's game and earn their fourth win. You can catch the game in person or on television. The game will be streamed on ESPN+. NMSU Volleyball is coming off a weekend where they split matches with Liberty. In the first match, the Aggies struggled while the Flames outplayed the Aggies on both sides of the ball. After several scoring runs, the Aggies were unable to close out the sets. The Aggies lost the first match 3-1, while the second match the outcome was the same, but the Aggies were the ones who belted out the victory. And their <sighs> they won the first and second set, but dropped the third. They ended the match by winning in four sets. The Aggies will host Western Kentucky University this weekend on Friday at 6 p.m. and Saturday at 12 p.m. On Both games will be streamed on ESPN+. Now on to soccer. The Aggies are on a roll with a five-game winning streak and will be putting that on the line this Thursday against FIU. They are coming off a road match against Jacksonville State where they shut, out, shut them out 2-0. The Aggies' last loss was nearly a month ago against USC. They hope to continue this run into Thursday's game and for the rest of the season. If you want to catch the match in action, you can head to the New Mexico State Soccer Athletic Complex at 7 p.m. And that's all for sports tonight. Join us for more sports action tomorrow. Still ahead on News 22, Noah will be back to take a look at your five-day forecast. In deep beneath the Cumberland Mountains in Grundy County, Tennessee, lies the Cavern Sessions. Center stage inside the mountain, welcoming roots, rock, folk, soul, and Americana. The Cavern Sessions. Saturday at 10 p.m. on KRWG Public Media. I'm Tom McLaughlin, host of Classic Woodworking, produced in association with Fine Woodworking Magazine. Unique design inspiration is turned into easy-to-follow projects for every skill level. So join me for season one of Classic Woodworking. Saturday morning at 9 on KRWG Public Media. Hello, I'm Consuelo Mack. Every week on Wealth Track, we sit down with great investors and financial thought leaders to talk in depth about strategies you need to build and protect your wealth over the long term. Join us on Consuelo Mac Wealth Track. Sunday at 2 p.m. on KRWG Public Media. Welcome back. Now let's take a look at our top stories. The Labor Department says the U.S. added nearly double the new hires expected in September. Also in September, small business owners reported struggling through high inflation and a labor shortage. And it's World, it's World Mental Health Day. One in six U.S. youth between the ages of 6 and 17 experience a mental health disorder every year. And Cassandra, I'm really looking forward to that game tomorrow. Yeah, how's the weather looking, Noah? Well, guys, it may be a little bit hot for that game tomorrow. 88 degrees is that expected high, so I definitely would take some water to the game. Jenny? And that's all for News 22 Tuesday. Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. Tune in tomorrow night for more news. I'm Jenny Hazlett. I'm Cassandra Zonias, and from the whole News 22 team, Jenny, Noah, Victor, and myself, good night. Take care.
This news brief in Espanol is brought to you by Noticias 22, Spanish language news for Southern New Mexico and West Texas. Noticias 22. El viernes pasado, residentes de un complejo de apartamentos encontraron una sorpresa en el estacionamiento. Tres autos fueron incendiados y los resultados fueron muchos daños. Los coches se ven derretidos con las ventanas rotas y escombros por todas partes. Noticias 22 recibió estas fotos que nos envió un residente del complejo The Flats a Ridgeview, ubicado cerca de la calle Trevis. Residentes, residente Kenny Kerberg de, dice que nunca había visto ventanas quemadas, vidrios en el suelo y motores de autos incendiados antes. Voceros del complejo nos informaron que están en el contacto con la policía de las cruces para ver quiénes son los responsables del, inc del incidente. El jueves pasado, la Policía Estatal de Nuevo México arrestó a un hombre acusado de homicidio de un infante. El hombre de 38 años, Lawrence Galvando, fue localizado alrededor de las 7 de la, de la noche por el supuesto homicidio de un infante en una residencia de la calle 14 en el noroeste de Albuquerque. Fue arrestado sin, inc sin incidentes debido a una orden de violación de su libertad condicional. Galvando fue entregado al Departamento de Policía de Albuquerque para ser entrevistado en relación con un caso de homicidio de un infante. Gracias por acompañarnos. Nos pueden seguir en las redes sociales. Esto ha sido todo por mi parte. Soy Diego Velázquez. Muy buenas noches.